Vitamin D toxicity can happen if you take too many vitamin D supplements. Even high levels that do not cause toxicity can also be harmful. But the real question is 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 too much? How much vitamin D do we really need? In this video, I'll be doing a little deep dive on D supplements and answer some of the most asked questions about it. So without further ado, real quick before we get started, hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe if you like this type of content, and let's get started. I think it's important to start off by noting that an estimated 41% of Americans don't get enough vitamin D. And we all know how important vitamin D is for a number of different reasons bone health and inflammation being two big ones, but the news stories you hear about vitamin D deficiency really aren't uncommon either. Because of this and because of the crazy recommendations you hear all over TikTok about how much vitamin D to take, it might lead some people to wonder about their own vitamin D levels and take either too little or too much of it. Which brings us to what levels are actually classified as deficient anyway. With a simple blood test, you can actually test if you are actually deficient or not. I've left a link for a test kit down below in the description if you wanted to test your levels yourself. Which I mean, is it always a good idea to have your data in front of you before you start taking high amounts of it and not know actually what your baseline is? The test measures your 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels, and a vitamin D level less than 20 nanograms per milliliter is considered deficient by most groups and a severe deficiency is defined as a vitamin D of less than 12 nanograms per milliliter. And there are many factors that can cause you to actually have a deficiency in it. For example, living in a place where sunlight is low or if you're more dark skinned, have obesity or have gone through gastric bypass surgery and even having some conditions that impair vitamin D absorption like inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease. But hold on a second, aren't there two types of vitamin D? Yes. You got ergocalciferol, which is vitamin D2, and cholecalciferol, which is vitamin D3. D2 is the plant form of vitamin D and typically comes from mushrooms and yeast. Cholecalciferol is your vitamin D3, which is a type of vitamin D your body produces after exposure to sunlight. And there aren't a lot of foods that naturally contain vitamin D3, but fatty fish like salmon and herring can be great sources, especially if you don't always have sunlight. But hold on, if I can just get it from the sun, why not just go outside more? That's because the amount of vitamin D produced from the sun greatly depends on your age, geographical location, and time of day, and even smog. For example, in the US, it would be hard to make vitamin D from sunlight for four months out of the year for some people. If you live in the northern US or Canada, it may be even as difficult as seven months out of the year. But the real question is, what supplements do I need to take to get my 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels close to or above 30 nanograms per milliliter? Is something like 10,000 IU a lot then? You see, vitamin D3 is available in different dosage amounts. You got 400 IU, 800, 1000, 2000, 5000, and 10,000. Sometimes you might have also seen 50,000 IU capsules, which are available by prescription only. So how much should you take then? Well, according to the NIH, the Endocrine Society states, for example, that to maintain serum 25 hydroxy D levels above 75 nanomoles per liter or 30 nanograms per milliliter mark that we mentioned, adults might need at least 37.5 to 50 micrograms or 1500 to 2000 IU a day of supplemental vitamin D. But in contrast, the United Kingdom government recommends intakes of 10 micrograms or 400 IU a day for citizens aged four and older. But keep in mind, they also state that the signs and symptoms of toxicity are unlikely at daily intakes below 250 micrograms or 10,000 IU. And this is where the 10,000 number comes from. So this is why it's important to have your levels checked to see if you're already at 30 nanograms per milliliter, because if so, you might not need a supplement at all. So does that mean toxicity happens at over 10,000 IU? To answer that, it depends on where your levels are at currently. Currently, some experts claim that vitamin D doses up to 4,000 IU per day are generally safe and well tolerated, and that higher doses may be recommended for certain individuals, but should only be taken under the supervision of a healthcare provider. And keep in mind, after taking vitamin D supplements for three to four months, have your levels rechecked to ensure that you're on the right track. I'm more curious to actually hear from you guys though. What are your thoughts about vitamin D? Let me know in the comments below. Also, 
Hit that subscribe button too if you found any value in this and I'll see you on the next one.